Many of these structures were sealed up thousands of years ago by the people who built them. But in some cases, wind and waves wore away that protective covering over time. These structures are called megaliths. You could call them gigantic works of art. They were built long before the pyramids, technical and logistical masterpieces that pushed the limits of human imagination. Large stone structures like these were built in many places around the world. For example, in the far north of Scotland, you'll find ancient constructions that are older than Stonehenge. Every hump and lump and bump that you see could be a new archaeological site. And each year, particularly during the plowing season, new sites are discovered by farmers. These discoveries outline an important chapter in human history. Until about 12,000 years ago, our ancestors were hunters and gatherers. Then, an irreversible transition to a new way of life got underway. The transition from hunting and gathering to sedentary farming was a key development. For millions of years, people had lived by hunting and gathering. And suddenly their lives changed radically, much more so than during the transition to industrialization or the digital age. This is Göbekli Tepe, a small hill in southeastern Turkey. Here in 1994, German archaeologist Klaus Schmidt discovered a series of huge stone structures, including decorated pillars that weigh up to 20 tons. A few years later, Austrian archaeologist Barbara Hochesch began researching the site. Göbekli is not only an architectural treasure and one of the most important structures of its kind in the world, it also symbolizes the beginning of the Neolithic age. The Göbekli Tepe complex was built by hunters and gatherers, that is, before mankind became sedentary. This fact revolutionized the conventional archaeological wisdom. We discovered a society that was completely new to us. That society had such a long history, and yet some aspects of it were familiar to us. An aggressive lion, for example, was just as much a threat to the people who built Göbekli as it is to us today. For those who lived near the site, a parallel supernatural world was part of everyday life. This crane may have symbolized a connection between the earth and the heavens. Beetles and snakes were important mythological symbols in many cultures. There seem to have been few barriers between the natural world and the supernatural. Teams of archaeologists from Germany and Turkey have only excavated a fraction of the site. But they've determined that this period of mysticism was relatively short-lived. Our research indicates that the early generations of sedentary societies kept covering up these sites and sealing them shut, so that they could no longer be used. But these sites were preserved in the collective memory of society for a very long time. There are good reasons why Göbekli lay abandoned for thousands of years. Perhaps the first farmers wanted to distance themselves from the practices of their ancestors. 
Göbekli had lost its original meaning. People had become sedentary. The director of the State Museum of Prehistory in Halle, Harald Mehler, says this was a major turning point in human history. It was really decisive. Here we have nearly 4,000 axe heads from the Neolithic period. People used axes to clear forests to create farmland. They also used them to split wooden beams, which were then used to build complex houses. This construction of housing was a key element in the transition to sedentary life. Hunters and gatherers also stayed in one place for extended periods, provided that they could find enough food. But the changes that took place in the Neolithic period were revolutionary. The transition to sedentary life was a key development. For thousands of years, people had lived as hunter-gatherers, a natural way of life. They fed themselves in a natural way as well. They had relatively few children because the women did not become pregnant while they were breastfeeding. But all that changed radically with the development of agriculture because that prompted people to change their diet. Grain now provided carbohydrates and domesticated animals provided meat and fats. That increased the fat content in the body. Also, women became pregnant more often, and this led to a population explosion. That, in turn, meant that people had to live together in smaller spaces, in houses, settlements, and villages. The work of archaeologists is often like trying to solve a puzzle. They carefully dig up artifacts that belong to a specific society and then try to recreate an image of what that society was like. Some objects, like these shards of decorated pottery, have lent their names to entire cultures. For example, the linear pottery culture, which coincides with the first appearance of food-producing societies. Burial sites are often rich sources of information for archaeologists. Not just human remains, but various items that were buried with the deceased. For example, an expert can determine whether a person was buried properly. If not, animals may have gotten into the grave and chewed at the bones. Maria Teschler Nicola is the director of the Archaeological Biology Department at Vienna's Museum of Natural History. She says you can learn a lot from skeletons. For example, we've confirmed vitamin deficiencies and stress symptoms in some remains. And that helps us to reconstruct what people ate and other aspects of daily life. We found evidence of anemia in the upper reaches of eye sockets. We've seen evidence of vitamin C deficiencies in the alveolar ridges and other bone formations. If we analyze this evidence systematically, we can extrapolate it to the entire population and try to reconstruct specific living and working conditions. Archaeologists always try to determine the age of artifacts. The development of radiocarbon dating was a major step forward in this process. Over the last 20 years, genetic analysis has also provided important evidence. Experts can now examine human and animal DNA that is several thousand years old. Anthropologist Joachim Burger says that genetic analysis of livestock can provide information on the migration patterns of Neolithic farmers. 
We did our very first tests on domestic animals and determined that all European cattle are descended from Iranian cattle. Today, those animals are found in Switzerland or East. 